Hi everyone, and welcome back to the MS Workouts channel. Let me ask you a question. Are you afraid that it's too late to gain strength because of years of inactivity, or even scared of losing muscle mass to the point where you can't get out of bed? Well, if these aren't questions that you've asked yourself, you should, because inactivity leads to muscle loss, AKA muscle atrophy, and the loss of ability to do daily functions, such as get out of the bed. So, if this is something that's important to you, which it is, every single one of you, then you're in the right place. Because this week's video, I'm going to give you several exercises that you can perform directly from your bed, so you can begin building strength without even needing to get up and down off the ground. I will demonstrate these exercises from the floor, but I want you to perform them in a bed or on a couch, or anywhere you have a flat surface instead, especially if you can't or don't want to get down on the ground. Remember, you did not lose your muscle overnight, and you're not going to gain it back overnight. So for the very best results, you should execute this session one to three times a week this month. We're focusing on fighting back against muscle atrophy, and you will be able to do so this month if you're consistent with this. Write down the times of each of your exercise attempts using the progress journal we give you. And if you do not have one, again, go ahead, download the free one that we've provided for you in the description box below. Next week, we're going to release another video. So make sure that you've subscribed to our channel and that you have the notifications turned on so you can be notified when the latest video drops so that you can utilize it and see results. All you're going to need for today's exercise session is a bed or a couch, the progress journal, and a cold bottle of water to help you prevent yourself from overheating. Let's go ahead and fight back against that muscle atrophy. All right, everyone, let's actively push back against that muscle atrophy and do it this time, this week, on a bed or a couch. Yes, I know I'm sitting on the floor right now, but remember, I want you to execute this in your bed, on a couch. This is something that should be extremely accessible to you, even if you don't wanna get down on the ground, or maybe you can't get down on the ground. We're gonna go through three exercises. We're gonna execute what we call isometric or metabolic sets. I want you to shift your perspective right now, okay? And I want you to understand that your body does not have to look like mine. The goal here in exercise, or any exercise, is to give your very best effort. Your hips don't have to come up off of the ground. Uh, you do not have to be able to raise all the way up. You don't have to be able to engage the entire time frame. I actually don't want you to. Exercise needs to be challenging. Okay? So if you're challenging yourself, if you're engaging your muscles, be kind to yourself and realize that you're doing it. I can completely understand that there may be frustration around where your current state is, but that's why you're here with me. Okay? Enough of the pep talk, let's go ahead and jump into things. We're gonna start with a bridge, lie flat, give your best effort. Okay, as I mentioned, we're gonna go into a bridge. Now, if you have never exercised with us before, I do not want you adding resistance to this. Yes, the goal is to challenge your body. That's what makes it different from physical activity, right? Exercise should be structured, measured, and progressive. Challenging, right? But let your body prove what it can do first. If you are able to complete the entirety of any of these sets, then add resistance. We're gonna start with a bridge. It's a hamstring glute erector exercise. Post your chain, really, really good for low back lumbar stability. So you're gonna begin in a lying position. You're going to press through the heels you're gonna elevate the hips into the air, and you're going to statically hold at the top. All right, press through heels, clock is on. So you're squeezing glutes. We are again targeting erectors, muscles on either side of the spine, glutes and hamstrings. There's a slight flare of the knees, you're gonna stay through the heels. You're going to actively be squeezing the rim and elevate. Notice how I was able to elevate a little bit higher. Now again, as I mentioned at the top, you may not be able to lift your hips up off the ground right now. Okay? The current function of your muscles may not allow you to do so, and that's perfectly okay. It doesn't matter how high you're able to raise your hips right now. The goal, the key, is to raise them as high as you can, and then keep them in that position for as long as you can. And if you can make it the entire 90 seconds, then it's time to increase the difficulty. The ideal goal is to find a difficulty that allows you to reach what we call muscle failure, or the point where you can no longer continue to keep the muscle actively engaged in that position. Why? Because that's going to ensure that we have sent a clear enough signal, enough of a challenge during the exercise to make your body adapt and change in the recovery process, which leads to results. All right, we're in the final 30 seconds. 
You should be feeling a deep burn, flare knees, squeeze glutes, raise hips, just give your best effort. If you're feeling discomfort into your low back, think about tucking pelvis, even lowering hips just a bit. You should not feel discomfort anywhere. You should just feel a deep burn and fatigue in the muscles. No more than about six, five, squeeze, lift, flare, engage, three, two, and completed. Slowly starting to lower. I did not reach muscle failure. You may have, if you did, you should have notated the time that is on the clock above if you completed the exercise you should write down okay what you did so i'm going to write down in my progress journal on my phone okay i'm 130 hit completed which means plus i need to add resistance next time okay being measured is an integral part of this process let's keep it rolling we're going to now go to a torso exercise abdominal exercise we're going to hit a metabolic or isometric crunch so you're going to sit up give your best effort and go from there all right so we're going to go an abdominal exercise or what we will call a metabolic crunch now what i'd like you to do here is you're going to sit up postured in the bed or on the couch again do not use any resistance if you've not done this yet in a second when we begin you're going to stay neutral you're going to then tuck slightly into the pelvis you're going to lean back i only want you leaning back far enough to feel abdominals engage while still being able to keep control. If you lean back too far, you may lose the ability to hold yourself and you may end up flat on the bed. We don't want that, okay? So ease yourself into this, allow yourself to prove what you can do and then adjust from there. Okay, you're going to again, tuck pelvis, cross arms, slowly start to lean back. Once you feel abdominals engage, clock is on. Now, we're diaphragmatically breathing, meaning blowing all the air to the lungs, every breath out. <sighs> Keeping pelvis slightly tucked, sternum slightly tucked, arms across. If you're using a resistance because you're able to complete this, remember you're doing this one to three times a week this month. If you're able to complete this, the entire 130, and you're adding resistance, we're trying to load the torso. So what you can do is add a dumbbell, don't hold it with your arms, but allow it to rest on your deltoids, the upper chest, the body, so that you're loading your chest. If you're holding the dumbbell like this, the arms are doing the exercise and not the abdominals. Now, muscle failure is the goal, and that's simply when you can no longer hold in this position. You might feel your hip flexors a little bit as well here, perfectly fine diaphragmatically breathing, working rectus abdominals, transverse abdominals, obliques, all the abdominal muscles, <sighs> squeezing and engaging. And when you get to the point where you can no longer hold in this position, you can either come out of it, right? Or slowly take yourself down to the bed, to the couch, okay? We're looking to challenge the muscle. We're in the final 30 seconds, what we call the exhaust range. Think about tucking pelvis, tucking sternum. You should not feel discomfort in your back, your neck, anywhere, okay? You should just feel muscle working and fatiguing. We have less than 15 seconds. <sighs> Think about crunching, shake is natural. Remind yourself the benefits of why you're doing this. Improved function, reduced symptoms, fighting muscle atrophy, right? Developing the musculature in our abdominals and our torso. And completed, slowly easing out of the exercise. I completed the exercise. So what I need to do is go to my journal, okay? You can either keep it in your phone. We give you the progress journal in the description box. So you can be handwriting it as well. The most important thing is that you are writing down your outcomes, being measured, creating structure around your exercise so that you're ensuring that you're giving yourself enough of a challenge to make it different than just physical activity, okay? We want results. We're not trying to just maintain health or move to move, we're exercising, okay? So I completed it. I need to increase the difficulty next time to make sure I'm challenging my body. Whew, all right, let's go to the last exercise in this series to make sure that we are getting the entire body engaged in fighting muscle atrophy from head to toe. We're gonna go to an upper body exercise. Let's do it. All right, as I mentioned, the last one's gonna be an upper body exercise. We're gonna execute what we would call a push plank, okay? This is a, um, a variation of the push up. We're gonna target the triceps, the anterior delts, and the pectoralis major minor. So the way we're gonna do this is we are going to go hands and knees, Okay. If your knees uh, are bothered uh, on the bed, on the couch, being on the knees, you can always go down to your thighs instead. Just be aware of your low back. Okay. Um, you do not want the low back to be too e extended here. You could put pressure on it. Okay. Um, you can always adjust um, by 
adjusting these forward or back. Ideally, having nose out over fingertips. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go a slight bend in the elbows. You want your shoulders, elbows, wrists all aligned. And you want your nose, if it were to fall off your face, hopefully it won't, uh, we want it to fall right about the line of both of the middle fingers, okay? So again, if you need to put a pillow underneath your knees, okay, and or go to the thighs, perfectly fine. We're going an isometric set. Let's rock and roll, clock is on, okay? So again, my nose is out over fingertips. I'm going slight bend. I don't feel any discomfort in my knees. My pelvis is slightly tucked. Notice from my legs where they meet the uh, mat here, where your legs are meeting the bed, to your shoulders, it should almost look like a, uh, a pie, right? It should look like a little ramp, okay? Uh, we should have a slight bend in our elbows. You should be actively trying to wrinkle, okay, the mat underneath, adducting, right? Or the bed, or the duvet cover, or the couch cushions, wherever you are. You'd be trying to wrinkle, squeeze, right, actively the entire time. Hands underneath, okay? That's going to allow you to actively engage the anterior delts and the pecs. Now, if your wrists bother you, feel free to go up onto the fists and make sure radius ulna are aligned. You could also get dumbbells or some type of a handle, okay, to place underneath. And if your wrists are still bothering you, then please go ahead and leave a comment in the description box below and we can help give you an alternate activity or exercise um, in the bed to target those muscles. Slight bend in the elbows, I said activity. It's not an activity, exercise, right? All right, last 15 seconds, actively engaging to make it exercise, squeezing and breathing. We want results, not just doing this to do it. We have no more than about five seconds. Four, keeping the slight bend allows the muscles to engage. You're not gonna be locked out and complete it, slowly disengaging. So I was able to complete the exercise. So again, I am going to be measured, right? I'm gonna write down, go to my notes page, and make sure I am measuring and writing down that I was able to complete the exercise so I need to increase the difficulty next time, which can be done in that push-up multiple ways. You can bring your hips into the air, you can add resistance, all kinds of other ways. And we'll save another video and time to talk about adding progression for that push plank. As I mentioned at the top of the video, execute this series of exercises one to three times. Ideally, you should be challenging yourself at an intensity that allows you to um, reach muscle failure, to um, challenge your body, right? Don't worry about what your body looks like during it. It shouldn't look like mine. You should just be challenging yourself. And if the intensity is high enough, you will need active rest days. You should not be able to do this every single day, okay? Active rest days, if you're curious about what they are, search the YouTube channel, leave us a comment. Uh, we are here for it. We can do another video in the future about that. Uh, but utilize this. Make sure you're getting one gram of, of protein per pound of gold body weight, ideally, uh, because that's going to help you have the building blocks plus the exercise to truly fight that muscle atrophy, which is the muscle loss. By giving the body the signal clear enough, then giving it the materials, you will make a difference, which then will take stress off your heart and lungs, add stability into your joints, give you more functional capacity and endurance during the day, and at the end of the day, improve the quality of your life. And that's why we exist, okay? Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the notifications, because this entire month we're talking about fighting muscle atrophy, and next week we're gonna give you some more tips to continue your journey in doing so. Have a great week, let us know if you need anything, and I'll see you next time. Our YouTube channel is a great place to start gaining strength, but if you want to get serious about reducing your symptoms and getting results, then you need to be on a weekly structured strength training program with other individuals just like you. And that's exactly what we offer at MS Workouts through our membership. Click the link in the video or below the video to learn how our membership can help you achieve your goals. And while you're on the website, make sure you sign up for the no cost seven day strength camp so you can experience how we can help you do the things that you love to do with more confidence. See you all next week.